Hey, what's happening, everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're checking out and reviewing the Alpha YS AAT projector. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, as usual, starting off with the unboxing experience, it's pretty straightforward. Everything is safely and neatly packed. We got the projector, the lens cover, the remote, the power adapter that runs at 12 volts, 5 amps, AV adapter, and finally, the manual. Starting off with the front, we have the lens, we have the logo, as well as some ventilation holes. On the right side, you'll find the keystone and focus adjustments with a bit more ventilation. As for the left side, there will be even more ventilation holes, this time it's through the exhaust. So once this projector is running, you'll have hot air blasting from the left side. On the top, you have an axle and offset power button right here. And on the bottom, we have four rubber feet, the speaker grill, a little kickstand, as well as a standard camera tripod mount. And finally, on the back, we have dedicated audio output, the AVN, the infrared sensor, which is only on the back, which is yes, the only way you can actually control this thing is by pointing the remote on the back side where the receiving sensor is. Next up, we have two USB ports for playing video on the built-in system. And yes, if you're wondering, this thing does come in an Android variant. Next up, we have the HDMI input, which actually has some really good response times. And um, I gotta say, it's pretty good. And yes, it does run at 60 FPS if you're coming from the last video. And finally, VGA in, power input, and even more ventilation. Now, as for the remote, it's pretty standard. It's got all your tactile buttons and all the functions that you need to control this thing. And yes, this is the only way you can actually control the projector, so make sure you don't lose it. And yes, that is an Android button that can be used on the Android version. A quick overview on the Android variant, it runs Android 6.0, one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of built-in storage, and it's gonna be pretty nice for the occasion when you wanna play videos directly on the device. Because the built-in video player here is pretty bad, and it doesn't support all the codecs, and even if your video is supported, it's most likely gonna lag. It's a very weak CPU that's inside of here, and I really don't recommend using it. Of course, most of you are gonna be using a Chromecast, or probably hooking up a laptop or your phone. That being said, the Android system here, although it's nice to have, it's not really necessary. But it's definitely nice to have since it will kind of turn this thing into an all-in-one computer. So yeah, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it, test it out, and show you guys how this thing performs. Let's go. All right, so here's what we have here. We have the projector. We have my trusty X230 laptop. We have the projection screen, which is absolutely bad for this test because it's not really white. It's an off-white color. That being said, here's the projector. It's hooked up. We got a tripod. We got a table just so I can have the laptop here and easily display some content to show you guys. Most of the videos I'm going to be displaying are going to be copyright-free. And uh, we're going to run some games, play some videos, live action, some anime, and see how this thing looks. So that's what that sounds like. And here's what it looks like with some ambient light. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty bad. So yeah, definitely make sure they have all your lights completely off. Now, on to the... Whoa, what's going on here? Okay. That is very interesting. It's like half of it's displaying at a different refresh rate. All right, so I just went in and adjusted my camera so it's no longer flickering. And no, you cannot see the flickering in real life. That being said, I have also adjusted the brightness and color as well as I can so you can really see what it looks like in real life. The testing situation right now is about 65 inches of display that is being projected about 2 meters away from the projector. We are in a pitch black room other than the computer over there. Let's go ahead and turn it off. And as you can see here, the edge-to-edge -edge focus is actually not bad. We can still see the lines as well as the numbers. Now, of course, it's not perfectly in focus, but I would say it's pretty acceptable, especially compared to old budget projectors at this price point with this size. Now, as for the center here, yes, it does look like it's smushed, but that's only because the image here is 6K, while the projector is displaying at 720p, so any high-res image will turn into something like this. Now, as for the vignetting, you'll definitely notice it. As you can see here, it, it kind of stops around here. There's a lot of it right here and on the other side, and it has a slight blue tint. But to be honest, you won't notice it too much, but it does affect the overall brightness around the edges. But one last thing you should know about is the diffraction, or should I say slight doubling kind of on the edges. Let me go ahead and boost my camera up and show you guys what I mean. On the right side, you can slightly notice it right over here. But if you go into the bottom, you can definitely see what I'm talking about. As for the top, it has more of a beveled look. So yes, it's not a perfect image, but it's damn good for the price. Now here's a quick look at my wallpaper. And as you can see here, it does look pretty good. But if you get close, you can start seeing the pixels but that's good because that means you have good focus. But if you get far away, it will look pretty nice, especially if you're outside in the yard, watching some movies with the boys while in quarantine. Not a good idea, but if you're wearing hazmat suits, then it's definitely a great idea. So now let's go ahead and move on to something different. Let's go in and check out the menus and see what kind of options we have and what the menu looks like here because it's quite different from the usual that we see, which is quite nice. So first off, we have language, then we have picture mode, and I definitely recommend having your own settings. Because as usual, the presets that are there are pretty bad. And as you can see, it is absolutely disgusting. It's over sharpened, the colors are not there. It just looks like a really bad image. There's standard, here's vivid, and here's mine. Here's vivid again, and here's mine. So as you can see, 
there's a huge difference between the two. So yeah, definitely recommend copying the settings here and tweaking them to your liking if you do end up getting this projector. Then moving on, we have color temperature. And again, set up your own settings because the projector here by default has a very bluish tone. Here's cool, here's medium, and here's the warm. Next up, we have aspect ratio, currently set to 16 by nine. Then we have the reduced display size, and this can be very useful, especially if you wanna get cleaner edges. So if you go ahead and select it and drop this display size to maybe around 90%, we can see that the edges here are nice and sharp and clean because it's using the center of the display, which is more focused, less vignetting, and it pretty much eliminates that haloing doubling effect on the edges. And then of course you can pull your projector backwards and end up with a better image. And the minimum size is around 75 and the maximum of course is 100%. Next up we have sound mode and uh, I have set it to user and I have trebles at 50 and the bass at 80. And again, you can set it to your own liking, but in my experience, I found user to be pretty good. And the bass here, you can see that it's set to 80 because the actual speaker here is not that terrible. I mean, it's not spectacular, it's not great, but it's definitely not bad. So if you're in a pinch, you can definitely make use of a speaker and I'll give you guys an audio sample of it in just a bit. Then we have surround sound, keep that off. You can turn it on and try it out if you want. It kind of muddies up the audio. Then we have flip, and I believe this is where you have the same button that's dedicated on the actual controller. There's a dedicated button for this on the controller, so you can just do that. Then we have factor reset and the software update, which uh, you'll probably never get. And uh, there's nothing left to do but to go ahead, play some games, run some videos, watch some anime, and give you guys an audio test, as well as a latency test of the HDMI input. So, let's go.
All right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that uh, montage of clips. I know it's not that great, but unfortunately I can't have anything too cool because of course YouTube copyright will claim it. And yes, I have adjusted the video clips and my camera settings to match the colors in real life. So it's not too bright or too dark. It's as close to real life as possible. So you're not being misled. So a couple things to wrap this video up, starting with the built-in video player. As you can see here, you can navigate, you can play videos and photos. In most cases, it won't play any of the videos you're trying to play. And sometimes if it does play, then the audio will not play, just like the video clip that I'm showing you right here. It's not very easy to adjust and skip, but it's a very basic player. And I definitely recommend not using it because you can easily get yourself a $30 or even a $20 Android box and it will play much better videos than you would on the built-in system. Which leads us to the USB ports. You can play videos on both of them, but at the same time, you can actually use them as power. And in my testing, it seems like it's actually outputting around 5 volts, 1 amps, or 4.9 at 1 point something amps. And the next thing to talk about here is the heat. Of course, you heard the fan. The fan here is noisy, and you'll definitely hear it in real life. It does output around 50 degrees Celsius of heat, so it's very typical. That's just how it is. And finally, something that some of you have been waiting for, and that would be the latency test. So... Here are my results. I've been getting around 78 milliseconds. Now, of course, it's not great, but at the same time, it's not as bad as, as other projectors, especially if you have watched my last video. This one, you can actually still use your mouse and still be able to navigate properly without overshooting or undershooting. And I would say it's good for maybe casual games like retro games, but if you're playing a game that requires perfect timing and accuracy in competitive games like Call of Duty, you probably watched the clip. I didn't do very well. And with all that being said, guys, that is all for this video. So conclusion, not a terrible projector, Decent speaker, decent performance, decent price. And this is as good as it gets for this price point. Of course, unless you get yourself a used projector, you know, that's in good condition and um, corona free, of course. So yeah, um, that is all for this video. I know I haven't uploaded in months, but here I am. I did some upgrades. And lastly, I have painted my wall white, so that should make things very nice. Anyways, guys, that was all for this video. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.